Today's New Testament reading is from Romans, the ninth chapter. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race according to the flesh is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. For not all who descended from Israel belong to Israel. And not all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said, About this time next year I will return, and Sarah will have a son. And not only so, but also, when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had done nothing either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls, she was told the older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I raised you up, that I might show my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whomever he wills, and he hardens whomever he wills. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Samuel Wergo. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There is a hard reality to the Christian faith and life one that brings great sorrow to our lives and increasing anguish to our hearts, just as it did for St. Paul, for pastors who see it in their congregations, for families who see it in their households, for all Christians who see it with their friends and community, for those who know the gospel of salvation, the good news of Christ Jesus and the forgiveness, life, and salvation that he brings and that he gives to the whole world, the hard reality is to see it rejected, and tossed aside, especially by those we love, those we want the most to know and believe the wonderful truth that Christ has freed us from our sins, and in him and him alone do we have forgiveness and eternal life, our salvation. Such heartache can raise all sorts of questions. Does God's word really work as it is promised to do? Is God unjust for allowing the gospel to be rejected? Does he care at all? This was Paul's anguish when it came to his own people, Israel, children of the flesh, God's children from of old. But it was not only of the flesh, but the promise, promise of the Messiah, the Christ, who would come in and through the flesh, but whose promise of life and salvation would extend to all who believe. That includes us. We who have heard this message believed it and made, been made partakers of the promises of Israel, the good news. The good news of salvation is that though all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, all are justified by his grace as a gift, a gift for the whole world. All means all. Christ crucified on the cross for your sins, for the sins of the whole world. But gift also means gift. And it's in the nature of a gift that it can be refused and rejected, that sinful man can, and indeed does, toss it aside. God is love. 
doesn't force himself upon us. He suffers rejection. It does not depend on human will or exertion, but God working in love through his word. But just as the word was made flesh, came to his own, and his own people received him not, so too is the world left free to receive him or not. And that hurts sometimes, that perplexes us, that leaves us in sorrow. But we are in good company with Paul and others. And do not think that God himself does not have such sorrow. He desires that all be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. It is in a sense a mystery beyond what God has given us to know, why some receive and believe and others reject, why the stony hearts of some are broken in contrition, repentance, and faith, and the hearts of others remain hardened. But God is true, and he is faithful to his promises. He is still love, and he still loves the whole world, and has given the gift of his Son. His word does not fail. It does not fail you. His love does not fail, and His perfect will is done on earth as it is in heaven. God be praised in Jesus' name.